Hello everyone and welcome to Getting Into. Today we will be discussing a game that is thoroughly attempted to ruin my life and may just succeed, Exalted 3rd Edition. So, what is Exalted? Exalted is a uh, Eastern fiction style RPG, originally published by White Wolf, now published by uh, Onyx Path Publishing which focuses on uh, humans chosen by the gods and uplifted, or exalted, enacting their will upon the world, for better and worse. There are a lot of aspects to this game. There are currently four editions out, two of which are uh, simultaneous in-progress editions. First and second edition were published by White Wolf. Third edition is being currently published, starting first in 2016 with the release of its core book, and the fourth edition is Exalted Essence, a slimmed-down, streamlined rule set for playing Exalted, including all Exaltation types, or splats. I have not read any edition other than third, so they will not factor into the discussion here. So, you have picked up Exalted, paid the $30 fee to get the core book, and you sit down, and holy shit, this book is nearly 700 pages. Where the fuck do you start? So, we're going to disambiguate the book a little bit. The first chapter, uh, which is to say the introduction chapter, is kind of just a lore primer on the world. It's very short, about 14 pages, and is at least worth going over. The first, ch the chapter one, or the second chapter... Uh, focuses on what the Exalted are and what they do in the world and what the different types are. Now, this book will tell you about a lot of different types of Exalted. Eight, to be specific. It only has one. It only has Solars. If you want to play any other type of Exalted, you have to buy another book. Typically cheaper than the core book, but you will have to buy another book. So... Sorry if you really wanted to play an Abyssal after reading about them from the core book and were disappointed to find out it's only Solars, which is the only type you get in the core book. You should still probably own the core book because it teaches you how to actually play the game. But yes, this book is an ad and has ads for what the other Exalted types you can play are. Chapter 2 is a lore primer, chapter 3 is character creation, chapter 4 is, hey, here's the parts that you make up your character that you should be informed about before character creation. Yes, we put it after the character creation chapter because we, like most people who design shit like this, are assholes. And you know what, I feel comfortable saying that about this dev team, for producing a 600 plus page book that is both bloated and incomplete. I'm not joking. So... Moving on from this, you actually get the, you know, chapter that you might want to buy a core rulebook for, which is to say the core rules in chapter 5. From pages 182 to page 250, the book is all rules, and the rules cover a lot of different things. Starting off, they have the general dice structure, which is a d10 dice pool system similar to uh, Chronicles of Darkness, uh, with some notable differences. For those unfamiliar with Chronicles of Darkness or Exalted, you roll a 10-sided die, or actually, I should say, you roll several 10-sided die based on a combination of your uh, attribute, which is your stats, and your abilities, which are used as your skills, and sometimes other features, but that's the basis, is attribute plus ability. You roll these 10-sided die, and anything above a 7 succeeds. If you roll a 10, you get two successes, and different things can add dice, or add successes, or make it so that you get doubles on lower numbers, or let you re-roll certain numbers, and it's a whole ongoing thing, but the general system is 10-sided dice, above a 7 is a success, 10's double successes. This game also features something called stunts, where you get dice bonuses for describing cool actions, and how you're doing something in an artful and exciting way. From there, this game does talk about what extended actions are, how opposed actions work. Uh, actions also have sometimes something called a difficulty, which is a threshold you must go meet or exceed in order to do what you want to do. Then it goes into combat, talking about Exalted's 
very intricate combat system. Keep in mind, Exalted isn't just about traditional D&D combat. You have combat rules for waging entire wars with strategies and ambushes, uh, rules for naval warfare, and even rules for social battle, in a sense. With this in mind, Exalted's combat system is very complicated, and I'm not going to break down the rules of how it works. Uh, let's just say that it's designed to be very stylish, and most of your attacks are just building style so you can deal actual damage. Uh, from there, the game will go on to discuss how social influence works and the way that social actions take place, and what the actions you can take are, how stats relate to social actions, and a very... Uh, Actually, just truly beautiful social system. Exalted has easily one of the best social gameplay setups I've ever seen, beating damn well everything else. Houses of the Blooded gives it a run for its money, but the difference between how uh, aspects work and how intimacies work, uh, aspects from Houses, intimacies from Exalted, I think Exalted beats Houses, in my opinion. Uh, that said, from there, uh, it will also discuss, like, oh, social actions and actual combat. It then discusses crime and investigation, both committing crimes and investigating it. Uh, discusses what leaders do for creating entire, like, cities, armies, and civilizations, because you are, in fact, just that good. As well as the concept of what projects are, crafting rules magic rules, environmental rules, destroying things, like feats of strength and demolition, environmental hazards, poison rules, disease rules, medicine rules, uh, rules on lore, because Exalted does have a feature called Introduce Fact. You state something you want to make a fact, your GM says, yeah, okay, that is something it is possible add to add to the story. It is this difficult. You roll if you have an appropriate backstory element or a specialty in the related uh, thing you are talking about. You roll intelligence plus lore, or if you have some abilities, they will occasionally let you roll other things. And if you beat the threshold, that is now fact. Uh, it, Exalted also has a crafting system. This crafting system can be edited out with one of the other books because it is explicitly very unpopular and basically involves grinding a meta a set of different meta currencies you grind a meta currency to grind a meta currency to grind a meta currency to build something and if you fail on the last step fuck you you can never try to remake it again they changed this in later books and then after that, you have uh, a section related to sailing and naval combat and the make these rules your own section, talking about dropping rules, adding rules, whether or not it's worth learning a rule because it might not be related to the game. There's no need to learn about sailing if you're going to be having a game in a place where there is no sailing at all. So, you know, it talks about things like that. Next up. The game goes on to the longest list it has. Starting on page 250 and ending on page 426. This is something called charms. Charms are a kind of not quite magic exalted use to do their feats of impossible bullshit. Uh, anyways, uh, in particular, the core book happens to have a lot of charms. These are all for what are known as Solar Exalted. The only Exalted that are in the core book is mentioned before. Solar charms are somewhat bloated and also hilariously incomplete. Uh, this is due to, again, just a little bit of first pancake syndrome on the hand of the core book. Uh, when Solars originally came out, it, Solars is always the first book to release. And so the devs coming off of, were like, okay, so we're coming off a of second edition. We're going to try to make third edition. And they sat down and they did what they could. You know, they, they came up with all the cool ideas they thought of, converted things from second edition into third. And at the end, they had a lot of charms. You know, almost 200 pages of charms. That's a lot of charms. And 
And then, uh, I don't know if it happened immediately the next splat or afterwards, uh, they were like, hmm, we need fewer of these. Let's try to aim for around 150 charms per splat. Which is now the standard. And boy howdy does it make a fucking difference on book length and not suffering. But also, as I said, despite there being whoa loads and, loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of solar charms the war charm set is incomplete ending at level essence or what it, uh level three or quote-unquote essence three uh rather than going to the full five like most charm sets do from there you get charms but different as we discuss martial arts where martial arts are a set of charms you can get that uh do not function like regular charms and uh, sorcery. Sorcery is magic. Magic can either be casting spells or doing freeform magical effects on the world that either are permanent or have the potential to dissipate. And from there, both of these involve like taking special merits and special abilities, but also they are separated because they are not limited to specifically the solar splat line. Any splat can be a sorcerer. Any splat can learn martial arts. Next up, you have uh, a section on characters and antagonists. Uh, there are some gaping holes in here, but broadly speaking, this is enough to at least have you be like, okay, I know how to make a quick character, and I know what these things are about. But then you have weird holes like, hey, here's uh, some of the dragon-blooded exalted type. Yes, you know, the guys of the five elements. We have only listed three of the five elements here as examples, and you look at that and you go, but why though? And the devs say, shut up, make it yourself. Because you are expected to homebrew in this game. After going and dealing with the antagonist section, uh, which, I mean, is fairly long, page 494 until 578, you know, 20-ish pages shy of 100, uh, you get a poorly labeled chapter. You get the chapter that focuses on items. How This explains how resources works, because similar to Chronicles of Darkness, you have the resource system where it's like, hey, here are your uh, resources, and one dot is X amount of things you can buy, two dot is X amount of thing, and so on. It then goes on to discuss the weapon profiles and the tags that some weapons have, the mortal weapons. It goes on to talk about exceptional weapons and equipment, which are not the super crazy, insane special stuff. Then goes on to talk about artifacts. Uh, goes on to talk about something called hearthstones, which are a special type of artifact. Uh, evocations, which are charms that you put on your weapon. And then a number of example artifacts and evocations. And then there are, I believe, some appendices or indexes uh, that make up the remaining pages as example artifacts and evocations start on page 614. And hopefully at this point, uh, you know, about 15-ish minutes into the video, I have at the very least made you feel like, okay, I know roughly where I can look at the Exalted 3rd Edition core book to kind of get what I want out of it. Because this is a, a lot of book to break down at once. And I'm sorry, but it's going to get worse. We're now going to start talking about other books you might be interested in having if you're going to be running Exalted. Now, this is ignoring the other Splat books, which I will at least break down slightly. And we're looking at like, hey, I want to actually run something in this world. And what does that mean for me? So, starting off, because we are not going in release order, we're going to talk about the GM's Guide. GM's Guide is called Crucible of Legend. You would not know it as the GM's Guide unless you were told that or just picked it up or possibly read the description on drive-thru. I certainly didn't look twice at Crucible of Legend. I thought it was a fiction book. Crucible of Legend has a ton of useful things for GMs uh, that want to do something with Exalted. It even says on the cover, A Storyteller's Guide for Exalted 3rd Edition. It's only 161 pages, uh, which, you know, damn, that's a fucking change, isn't it? So, 
The game talks about running the games, styles of gameplay, setting up a session zero, naming conventions in the setting, how to teach Exalted, uh, treating topics with respect, the whole this game is an Eastern fiction game designed by Western game devs. Yes, we know you have to be respectful. Uh, going and customizing the settings, such as removing entire types of Exalted from the setting, if you so wish, and other insane shit. Uh, you have, it talks about modifying social influence, modifying the way lore and introducing a fact and knowing a fact and challenging an existing fact works. Because challenging a fact is, hey, the GM said this is a fact. I would like to challenge that and say that the fact is this instead and that the thing the GM said is a common misconception. And then you roll. If you win the challenge, you are correct. Uh, running different types of games, uh, working with a feature called the Great Curse, and, like, changing up the Great Curse because the Great Curse is a stress mechanic and not all tables like that as much. Optional rules, such as making the game harder, making the game easier, changing how initiative works, really quickly, uh, really quick down and dirty combat, optional death sections, uh, some naval combat changes, uh, so a few other changes to how some things work. Here's a way to make some diff how to tweak your antagonists and make battles more than just we're going to box a motherfucker until he's dead or gives up creating games where you go through multiple like sets of characters to build a legacy uh something called virtues which is a thing where it's like hey what are your characters quote unquote virtues uh team play Changing how projects work so that they don't, uh, kind of suck anymore and you don't have this weird, like, managing the number of projects you can do and what XP you're dedicating towards them in their meta currency. Um, new travel rules, a simplified crafting rule set, which is super handy and super good. Um, uh, they replace, uh, flaw- a way to replace flaws with a more temporary situation called conditions to generate XP, because a game- uh, because this book actually does bring the game a little bit more in line with some of the ways Chronicles of Darkness 2nd Edition works. Alternate character creation and progression. Um, how to, as a GM, run some of the antagonistic character types, such as- uh, alchemical, infernal, and get him. Uh, okay, I've heard it pronounced getamane, but I'm going to pronounce it getimian characters. Uh, here's how to run like the existing known. Like here's your lore for. Hey, what the fuck is going on with the different types of exalted, including including those we haven't talked about yet. This is a really handy book if once you get comfortable with Exalted, you're like, this is clunky. If it seems clunky, there is a more than zero chance that Crucible of Legend has something to at least tweak it, if not outright fix it. Really handy book that you're going to want as a GM, no questions asked. Next up, we have 100 Devil's Night Parade. 100 Devil's Night Parade adds in a shitload of enemies of all different types of variety so that you can have more fun lore things to throw at your players. It's really handy. I advise buying it. There's a collection version that gives you everything. Similarly, if you want to have NPCs rather than just enemies to throw at your characters, you can buy Adversaries of the Righteous. It's the same thing, but named NPCs. Both of these books are really, really handy. Hey, do you want to know the lore of the world of Exalted? Consider buying Across the Eight Directions, a book that sits down and says, okay, north, south, east, west, northeast, southeast, northwest, southwest. Here's what's there, broken down by, like, different civilizations and general overview of the region. 
There's also a book called The Realm that goes into the center of the world of Exalted, The Realm. And by center, I mean literal physical center of the world. Uh, carrying on, after that, you can you probably want to pick up Arms of the Chosen. Arms of the Chosen is a magic item book. It also helps you just by sheer like, hey, here's a list of magic items to look at. Uh, you can be like, okay, cool. Now that I've looked at this for a while, uh, I now know how to make my own uh, items. I can now homebrew different types of uh, artifacts is what magical items are called. And having done so, you know, you will have a much easier time making them just by sheer like, okay, I can turn this into that, or I can make this, or this is roughly on par with that. It's not exactly a homebrew guide, but it goes into the way that magical items work, and that's good enough. Speaking of homebrew guide, if you're a GM who wants to really dedicate yourself to running Exalted, now that it's out, you're going to want to pick up one of the player books called Exigence Out of the Ashes. Why? Because Exigence is the homebrew guide for homebrewing your own Exalted. And it makes it way easier to homebrew shit. So, yeah. Exigence is a splat book for players, but it also has a lot of GM content, including, hey, here is how you build an entire Exalted type. Here's how you build a charm. Here's how you build an anima banner. And basically, all of the features of Exalted that you're going to learn as you run or play Exalted, Exigence just sits you down and says, here's the fucking magic behind the curtain. Do it yourself if you want to. I have been told this book was released because people kept asking how to do things for homebrew, so the devs were like, fuck it. We're moving the homebrew book up the release order and releasing it next instead of our next slated project. I don't know if that's true, but hilarious if so. Good job, devs. This is a fantastic, uh, absolutely just beautiful homebrew guide. It also has my favorite Exalt Splat, the Umbrals and the Heart Eaters. God, I love terrible Exalted that are just there to ruin the world. Beautiful. Chef's kiss. Now, I realize we've kind of gone over a number of books, and if you're like, well, I want to get really deep into this system, you've probably been writing down names furiously. Uh, I'm skipping fiction books. Like, keep in mind, uh, Across the Eight Directions is a fiction book, but it is a, a lore book. It's like, hey, here is, here's this place. Here's what the place is about. Here's how the society is structured. Here's how it's military. Here's its economy. Here's various issues that might be plot lines. Here's the local gods. It's very much like, here's what this is, piece by piece. We're going to break it down for you. Great inspiration. But what if you don't want to play Solars or make your own Exalted? What if... What if you have no need of Crucible of Legend because you like the core rules as is, but you just don't want to play a Solar? Well, at time of recording, there are two other Exalted Splats for you, each of which has a companion book. Starting things off, in terms of release order, we have Dragonblooded, what fire has wrought. Dragonblooded are, at time of release, excluding Exigence, which are a mixed bag, the only terrestrial exalt. Exalts are split into terrestrial and celestial tiers. Celestials are better than terrestrials. There are things that have the keyword terrestrial that says if a terrestrial exalt uses this, they get a shittier version. So, yeah. Dragonblooded, despite this fact, are the most politically powerful and numerous exalts, and in that way they are arguably the most powerful. They overthrew the Solars. The Solars are the best of the best. They drove out the Lunars. The Lunars are the equal companions to the Solars, different but in their own way easily able to compete. Solars' theme might be perfection, Lunars might be change, but the Dragonblooded took the world, because dragon-blooded are literally built different. Most exalts reincarnate. An exaltation is a soul. An extra soul you put inside a person. And that extra soul takes on qualities of that person and memories and can reincarnate them. Exalted head can have many incarnations. 
Dragon Blooded do not work that way. Dragon Blooded do not reincarnate. Instead, their exaltation is passed on through Bloodline. Which means that given enough time, and literally any random person in any random corner of the world, can just randomly exalt as a Dragon Blooded, because statistically at some point in their gene line, there was probably a Dragon Blooded in there. And so the Dragon Blooded are crazy numerous. And because of this, they're also fairly diverse. While the Dragon-Blooded Empire of the Realm may have its hand on the throat of the world, it does not have the world firmly in its grasp. As such, uh, Dragon-Blooded, who have either been left the realm or who were born from people who were not part of the realm or were never part of the realm, have managed to spread throughout the world. A Dragon-Blooded can be anywhere from any type of society and therefore can be drastically differently shaped than those of the realm, even though the realm is the most prominent. Dragon-Blooded are structured fairly similar to Solar, which Solar's in terms of their charm set, which is to say Solar's and Dragon-Blooded both, both base their charm lists off of abilities, which is to say skills. Solar's have sailing charms, Dragon-Blooded have sailing charms, Solars have war charms, dragon blooded have war charms. That said, dragon blooded are, at the moment you look at them, just fundamentally less powerful than Solars. There's an ability called an Excellency. Excellencies let you add dice to your roll at a 1 to 1 point cost for Essence, which is effectively your mana. Solars get Excellencies basically for free. Uh, if a uh, solar has the ability as a favored cast, uh, a favored or cast ability, if the solar has the an ability or has a charm in the ability list, a solar gets an excellency for free, and can just add a tribute plus uh, ability dice. In the meantime, dragon blooded are required to take charms that function as these excellencies, explicitly dedicating XP to the ability to add dice to these charms. The dragon blooded are powerful because they are a capable of being a numerous unified front making up for each other's weaknesses. They are not odes to perfection. They are distinct unique powers that come together to be greater than the sum of their parts. Dragonblooded also have a uh, fun and exciting companion book called Heirs to the Shogunate. Uh, Heirs to the Shogunate is, uh, in my opinion, not the greatest of the companion books. It's namely a lore source book. It talks about uh, basically going and running a school game and talks about a different set of Dragonblooded that are not quote unquote the realm known as Look Shy. Uh, it also talks about a group called Prasad, the Forest Witches, and the Outcasts. So it spends most of its time talking about lore of Exalted outside of the realm, which is in of itself very handy to have, and you can learn a lot of fun things, and they'll give you lore about, hey, here are these people, don't you want to know about them? It also has new charms in all charm sets, as well as some new items for Dragon Blooded to play with. And then it goes and gives you a number of Dragon Blooded NPCs who are all named NPCs, as well as telling you about hey, here is some shit that's going down in the world, like, you know, the possible civil war that's about to happen amongst the Dragon Blooded and an appendix about, hey, what's going on with these things. Heirs to the Shogunate is an excellent source book to have if you like running Dragon Blooded. And a source book that's quite like this is something that isn't exactly the most notable thing that Dragon Blooded have. Next up, you have the Splat for Lunars. Lunars are fucking werewolves, but better. Uh, <laughs> I... I know that my dragon blooded thing was kind of serious, but uh, yeah, no. So uh, dragon blooded are fucking. Dragon blooded are themselves kind of like the everyman hero because while solars are 
humanity exemplified to its maximum. Dragon blooded are kind of just like lesser. Meanwhile, you have lunars. Lunars are great. Lunars are fucking shapeshifters. They can steal your form. They can steal your dog's form. And uh, they can do it in ways where you never know what happens until someone is ruining your fucking credit score across the world. Yeah. So, uh, Lunars were the equal pair to the Solars. Solars are descendants of the Sun. Lunars are, or sorry, chosen of the Sun. Lunars are chosen of the Moon. Where Solars exemplify humanity, the Lunars exemplify evolution, change, and adaptability. Change your shape. Change your entire body into something else. Mutate yourself. Gain temporary mutations. Gain permanent mutations. Fucking take two animals and slap them together and combine mutations from both to make yourself absolutely horrifying, like a fish man with a fucking gun. Yeah, I mean, sure, technically the guns in Exalted are flamethrowers and not guns, but you can still run a fish man gun build. That's valid. Exalted is weird. So, Lunars have the benefit of being very fun and functioning very differently from what you're likely to see in the place of Solars and Dragonblooded. Lunars are attribute-based Exalted, meaning they care about their stats, not their skills, and that's where their excellencies and abilities come from. While this would by default mean that they are going to have less dice because rather than adding attribute ability, they can just add attribute, Lunars have the ability to add in uh, for their excellencies another a second attribute and use that to add to their dice because of their aggressive adaptability and ability to take things from animals and just apply them on a whim and shapeshift in varying ways having both full animal forms and hybrid forms as well as steal the forms of other people lunars are natural infiltrators and extremely diverse individuals capable of accomplishing many, many different things. Lunars also have a unique cast system where once you choose your cast, you lock in. Unlike your cast being chosen at your time of exaltation, Lunars all start off as what are known as castless. They don't abide to any of the forms of the uh, of their casts and are able to not necessarily freely, but switch between them, gaining the benefits of each before they make their choice. Lunars also get their bodies reshaped upon exaltation, becoming their ideal selves at the moment they exalt. Lunars also get the benefit of their god actually fucking guiding them, as Luna will herself be present at each exaltation, becoming what the person needs in that moment to force sudden drastic change, whether it be a warrior you cannot they cannot beat, a comforting parent, or even just an animal to guide you to where you need to be. And so the Lunars are also distinct in that the Lunars have actually managed to maintain their fucking uh, knowledge base. The Dragonblooded have gone through a couple of evolutions over their time, and because they are the shortest lived of the Exalted, there are no really old Dragonblooded who are like, I remember what it was like before the now times, so their myths have been twisted. Solars got locked away for a few thousand years, and they're only now coming back. They're regaining memories, but they don't have any elders to tell them where to go. Lunar Exalted have a bunch of people from back in the day when Exalted were first created to kill the parents of the gods. Literally, the Lunar book is just full of, and this guy survived the Primordial War, and you're like, wow, that's like the sixth guy, this book. Can I get someone who didn't survive the Primordial War? Or hell, even the Usurpation. I'll take a guy who got exalted last week in the war, please. Uh, which, I mean, obviously they want to show off the exceptional people. But in short, Lunars are distinct because they have people who survived all the horrible shit that went down and are still here to guide people with the knowledge of the most ancient exaltations. And that's pretty cool. Lunars also have a really cool book called Many-Faced Strangers. Whereas The Heirs of the Shogunate is a heavy lore book, uh, it's true that this book also has a lot of lore, talking about the nature of the different groups and some of the famous uh, groups of these Lunars. It also, just by 34 pages in, rather than a couple hundred, starts talking about new charms 
nets you a bunch of really fucked up martial arts. Uh, including, I do not actually perform martial arts. I am going to just throw magical swords at you until you fucking die. Thousand Blade style, my beloved. And then a whole bunch of really cool sorcery. And a whole bunch of uh, artifacts. It's a really fun source book. Full of just all kinds of exciting and goofy things. And actually, one of the really, really cool things specifically about both the Lunar Book and the Lunar Companion Book is it adds in uh, just shitloads and shitloads of new animals because the Lunars are going to want to probably turn into some kind of animal at some time. And it really helps if you have a stat block for that ready to go. Uh, so with that, we've kind of covered all of the things. Again, if you're, if you're like, oh man, I want to make my own Exalted though. As I said before, that's just Exigence, but from a player direction. You can use it just like a GM. And it, Exigence does have some pre-made Exigence in there, as well as some quote-unquote apocryphal Exalted. So there's a lot of diversity in the Exigence book, and I don't want to just glance over it for its GM perspective. From a player perspective, it offers a lot too including teaching players who want to say, hey, there's not a charm for this, can I make this a charm? Yeah, you just gotta use the Exigence book and see how they do it. Hopefully this, oh god, uh, almost 40 minute video has helped you at least know what Exalted is and how Exalted at a baseline works. I haven't gone in depth like I have with some of my other things, mainly because I figure getting into Exalted is a matter of knowing where to start, what the books do, and how to use them. Something that I am still in the process of learning, even though I run, like, two games a week. With that, uh, feel free to check out other videos on the channel. We have things talking about getting into RPG systems, as well as specific RPGs, and we occasionally do other things, like tell people to read Apocalypse World. Read Apocalypse World, it's the best. Uh, with that, uh, if you like what I have going on here, uh, then in that case, thank you for watching. You can find me at startplaying.games slash GM slash Tango if you want to hire me to run games or see what I'm running and sign on up. Uh, you can buy my games at strandedpublishing.itch.io. Some of my games are on drive-thru. I'm in the process of moving more there, but it's slow going. I am also can be found at tumblr.com slash blog slash Tango, where sometimes I yell about game creation and sometimes I go silent for months, much like YouTube. And if you want to support me financially, you can go to ko-fi.com slash Tango. I don't offer anything at the moment, but in the future that may change as I'm looking to maybe offer people some things. But if you support me on Ko-Fi, uh, much appreciated, and this will help me have more time to make more content because I'll have to spend less time prepping for games and reading Exalted books. Thank you very much, everyone, and I hope you all have a wonderful time span, wonderful future in general.